Just like equations, inequalities can be one step, two step, or multi step, depending on the number and type of operations that need to be completed to solve the inequality. Today we're going to talk about one step inequalities. The process of solving an inequality is no different than solving a one step equation. There are just a couple little rules here and there. So let's review one step equations. In order to start solving an equation, we need to ask two very simple questions. The first is, what's happening to the variable? Sometimes it's as easy as reading the equation. x minus 5 equals 12. The 12 is by itself. It's not affecting the variable. x minus 5, so I'm subtracting 5. How do I undo this, in, or this operation? I'm going to use my inverse operations. The opposite of subtraction is addition, so I'm going to add 5 to undo subtraction of 5. I'm going to apply the appropriate inverse operation to both sides of the equations in order to keep things balanced. So I'm going to add 5 to the left side of the equation, add 5 to the right side of the equation. Now I need to evaluate each side of the equation. Don't just simply assume that you can cancel things out. Negative 5 plus positive 5 gives us 0. That's the identity for addition subtraction. So I know that x is going to be by itself. 12 plus 5 gives us 17. So x equals 17. My variable is all by itself. Let's try a couple down at the bottom. Negative 12 equals x divided by 5. What's happening to my variable? I'm dividing by 5. How do I undo that? I'm going to multiply by 5 on both sides. I put my inverse operation on both sides of the equation to keep things balanced. If I take x divided by 5 and multiply that by 5, I'm going to get 1x. That's my identity, 1. So I'll leave 1 on, or I'll leave x on on the right side and on the left side, 5 times negative 12 gave us negative 60. So my equation is solved because my variable is all by itself, or it has a coefficient of 1. On your own, try the next problem, negative 6x equals 2.5. Before moving forward, consider this problem. Try graphing 2x is greater than 8. We know how to graph inequalities at this point. This problem does not look like what we've, what we've graphed on a number line before, though. Try to complete this phrase. You cannot graph a blank until you have blank for the blank. The variable must be by blank. In order to graph an inequality, especially if the inequality is not solved already, we need to follow a couple basic steps. First, solve the inequality the same way you would solve a one-step equation. So we follow those same simple questions. What's happening to my variable? How do I undo it? 5 plus x, that means I'm adding 5. I know I'm adding 5 because it's positive 5 plus x. So I'm undoing addition using subtraction. So I'm going to subtract 5 from both sides. 5 minus 5 gives me 0, so I'm left with x on the left. 2 minus 5 gives me negative 3. This is my solved inequality. x has to be by itself before you can plot an inequality on the graph, so you have to solve for x. One of the few differences between solving equations and solving inequalities is if you have to multiply or divide by a negative, flip the inequality symbol around. In this case, we subtracted 5 from both sides, so I'm not going to touch the inequality symbol. Now all I need to do is graph the inequality on the number line. x is greater than negative 3. So that means it's going to be open, because it's not greater than or equal to. So it's going to be open at negative 3. I'm going to pick a, pay, uh, pick a point on the number line. 0 is always nice. 0 is greater than all negatives. 0 is less than all positives. Likewise, all, or all negatives are less than 0. All positives are greater than 0. We know exactly where 0 is located. That makes it very easy to check for true or false statements. So if I plug in 0 is greater than negative 3, that's a true statement. I know that for a couple reasons. 0 automatically is greater than all negatives, plus it's to the right of the point that I plotted. It's to the right of negative 3. Values to the right are always greater, values to the left are always less than. So I'm going to point in the direction of 0. If I had a false statement, I'd point away. Let's try a couple together. 
negative 6.4 is greater than 2x. What's happening to my variable? I'm multiplying by 2. So to undo that, I'm going to divide both sides by 2. Negative 6.4 divided by 2 gives me negative 3.2. 2x divided by 2 just gives me x. I have x by itself. It's solved. Now I can plot my point. I notice that I divided a negative by a positive. I did not divide by a negative. So that negative rule where we flip the inequality does not come up yet. So I'm going to find negative 3.2. Whenever I have to plot a decimal or fraction, so a part of a whole, I need to figure out between which two integers, which two of those counting numbers on the number line, my decimal value or part of a whole lies between. Negative 3.2 and negative 4 are are the two closest values, the cl two closest integers. So negative 4 and negative 3. It's going to be a little bit closer to negative 3. It's not quite halfway to negative 4 yet, so it's going to be a little bit closer. We just estimate. Now I want to pick a point to figure out which direction I'm going. I'm going to use 0. So when I plug it in, negative 3.2 is greater than 0. That is not a true statement. Negatives are always less than 0. 0 is always greater than negatives. You can also notice that negative 3.2 is to the left of 0 on the number line. That means it's less than. This is a false statement. I'm going to point away from 0. I'm going to point away from the value I plugged in. Next, I'm going to solve this problem. x divided by negative 4 is less than or equal to 3. What's happening to my variable? I'm dividing by negative 4. So I'm going to multiply both sides by negative 4. When I multiply or divide by a negative number, I need to flip the inequality around. So when I, multi or when I multiply negative 4 times x divided by negative 4, I get x by itself. 3 times negative 4 is negative 12. A lot of students leave this problem as is. That in inequality symbol needs to flip when you multiply by negatives. So now it went from less than or equal to to greater than or equal to. Had I plotted it with the wrong inequality symbol, my final graph would have been incorrect. So I pick my point. In this case, it's going to be on negative 12. It's going to be a closed point because it's greater than or equal to. That means that that value is included with my solutions because negative 12 is in fact greater than or equal to negative 12. I'm going to pick a point. Let's use negative 5. You don't always have to use 0. So I'm going to substitute it in. Is negative 5 greater than, greater than or equal to negative 12? Well, if I look at their location on the number line, negative 12 is further to the left, negative 5 is further to the right. So using that logic, negative 5 has to be greater. Values to the right are greater, values to the left are less than. Having good math sense when it comes to your negatives also really helps here. Think about debt. I'd rather owe someone $5 than $12. $12 is further in debt, so it's further to the left on the number line, which means it's a lesser value. This, in fact, is a true statement. That means I'm going to point the arrow in the direction of the true statement value. So I plugged in negative 5, so I'm going to point my arrow at negative 5. If I had gotten a false statement, if negative 5 was not greater than or equal to negative 12, I would be pointing away, pointing the opposite direction on my number line. 